Self-Winding Automatic Rolex OP Hamage by Benya. Fun sky blue dial, 100 meters of water resistance, stainless steel bracelet, see-through screw down case back. What else could we want for $22? Welcome back to Wes Watches, and yes, that's right. So this bad boy here cost me just $22. And let's be frank, it doesn't look like it cost me just 22 bucks because it does have a very interesting dial. It's got a bit of loom, but it's got 100 meters of water resistance and it's automatic. And the automatic movement here is actually comparable to Miyoto 8215, nothing spectacular, but still quite good. And it's also comparable to the Seiko NH35. But I will be telling you all about this movement, the dial, the case, etc. in this review. And I have actually left a link to the listing I got this watch from in the description below the video so make sure to check it out because as you're probably aware i am an affiliate with aliexpress so that means once you do make a qualified purchase i will get some kickback it won't cost you anything but it does help me get a bit of commission from aliexpress so i can get more watches and bring them to you for this channel anyways without further ado let's get into this review Not sure if you knew this, but Benyar is actually Pagani Design's budget brand. Considering that Pagani is a high quality budget brand, is Benyar any good? Well, let's find out. First up, the dimensions. So we've got a diameter of 39 millimeters, a height of 12.1 millimeters, lug to lug measurement 47.4 millimeters, and that is all thanks to the inverted end links a lug-to-lug -lug width of 19.5 millimeters and it tapers down to the clasp to 17.7 millimeters. Now I do want to mention the diameter of the crown which is quite hefty and it comes down to 6.5 millimeters. The weight was 120 grams and that is after I've removed four links, so two links on either side to fit my six and a half inch wrist. Looking down at the watch, you want to smile, I know I do. The case aesthetics are all too familiar from the more pricey watches. Gentle rounding of the case on the sides. It's not often I get to handle an automatic under 25 bucks, especially one with very decent specs and looks. The case here is polished, flowing into downward slanting lugs. The transition to the top of the case is smooth. The edge bevels have been rounded and well smoothed all over. There's no sharp edges on the watch at all. We also get a fixed bezel surrounding the crystal. The case here is a zinc alloy. Luckily, the fine brush bracelet allows for plentiful play of light and the contrast of lugs and end links is hardly noticeable and pretty much well disguised. On the right hand side, we get a hefty push and crown, six and a half millimeters in diameter. That does make it quite convenient to pull and adjust the date and set the time. It's unsigned, but it's sort of expected at this price point. On the back is where we get the pleasant surprise. So we get a see-through case back or otherwise known as an exhibition back. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And the actual case back is made from stainless steel. And as you look through this exhibition case, you will see a signed rotor. On the solid stainless steel screw down case back, you also get the specs printed on the perimeter. Now through the crystal back we see a simple Seagull ST6 movement, but we'll discuss it in much more detail slightly later. Now onto the bracelet, well it's solid stainless steel. I did mention the inverted end links that allow for the modest lug to lug measurement of just 47 millimeters. So here is how it looks on my six and a half inch wrist. There is no overhang whatsoever. At the lugs, the bracelet width is 19 and millimeters and is proportional to the 39 millimeter case diameter, giving it a classic symmetry ratio of one to two. The bracelet brushing style is even and consistent on the inner and outer sides. The glossy polish is on the sides or on the edges of the bracelet. It is a push pin bracelet. And once again, it is expected at this very budget price point. I have been wearing the watch for around two days now, just trying to get familiar with it, see what I like, what I don't like, and how does it feel in real life. 
So it's not just opening up the box and telling you about this watch. This is about my experience. And with the bracelet, it's not very spectacular. Considering the center and outer links have the same brushing, the bracelet feels a bit dull, not boring, but just dull-ish. Surprisingly though, the press clasp is signed with the Benya logo. But once again, it's a very simple and plain clasp. There is no safety latch and there is no micro adjustment options. Now we get to the good stuff and we can finally talk about the dial because the dial is what you'll be looking at, well, when you look at your watch. And that will also be the eye-catching piece on your wrist for others to notice because others will probably notice this dial. I love the color here. So it's sky blue, but really it sort of feels a bit talkers to me. Maybe even rich talkers and going into the sky blue. It's very rich. Now you do get different color options with the Benyar. You can get the coral red, you can get the yellow. Well, actually the yellow looks slightly orangey. You can get the blue, the green, as well as a black dial. I'm happy that it's not the baby blue. It's a bit more rich and a bit more unique. The dial texture is smooth, but non-reflective. And considering we get mineral glass crystal without any anti-reflective coating, there are minimal reflections. Yet, because of the smooth surface of the dial and a mirror-like reho, we do get to enjoy some light play. The button indexes are applied. We get double buttons at the 6, 9 and 12 o'clock positions. The buttons get BGW9 Loom edged in chrome. The mini track is rounding the perimeter of the dial right up against the reflective reho. In regards to the hands, we get plain button hour and minute hands with dabs of loom. The seconds pointer has almost smooth sweeping motion across the dial. To be frank, the loom is not the brightest here and it will not win any longevity competitions either. At the three o'clock position, we get a very neat and tidy date window. At close up, you can see the detailing via the use of downward sloping bevels in the cutout. I particularly enjoyed the unobtrusive printed logo and brand name under the 12 o'clock and the words automatic and 100 meters water resistance at the bottom of the dial. So the printed text here is actually in black and it's not glossy, it's not in your face, it's sort of subdued and it doesn't grab attention because we do have the white buttons or the indexes. We've got the distinctive hands and this beautiful rich turquoise, almost sky blue dial and the black text, it doesn't create clustering on this open and clear dial. Now I want to touch upon the movement because this watch does have something to say about it. So the OP Homage here uses a Chinese automatic self-winding movement, namely the Siegel ST6. This is the most commonly used mechanism with Chinese automatics. In summary, it gets 17 joules, 21,600 beats per hour, and about 36 hours of power reserve. The variance per day is about 10 seconds, plus or minus. And what I do like is that it is actually a hackable movement. On top of that, the power reserve is quite decent, 36 hours. So this movement is actually comparable to the Miyoto 8215 as well as the Seiko NH35. Another really cool feature about the Seagull ST6 is that it has a sort of Seiko feature, the magic lever. So what that means is let's say your watch is unwound. Well, all you need to do is shake the watch left to right and it starts moving. So once again, this is a dependable and commonplace movement. It's not an outlier. This is a normal and common movement. That means that it is dependable. Another interesting fact is that the movement on its own can cost you anywhere between five and seven dollars. Considering that I got this watch for 22, and as I mentioned earlier, I will leave a link to that in the description below the video, so check it out if you want a sharp price. Well, 22 minus, let's say, five, so you're left with 17 bucks, that's it. And you've got a stainless steel bracelet, you've got pretty cool design and looks, you've got a see-through case back or the exhibition case back, so it's a pretty cool eye-catching watch, which you get, well, 
quite cheaply. Anyways, you know me, I do look out for the good deals and personally I think this is definitely a good deal because for 22 bucks you can what? Maybe get yourself a decent quartz or not even. Here you get a decent automatic movement plus a really cool Rolex OP homage. Anyways, thank you for watching this review. If you have enjoyed it, please drop me a like. If you want to see more of the same, you know what to do. Please hit the red subscribe button below the video and I'll see you in the next one.